Hey, this is Emily, and today I wanted to go through all of my video game purchases I made last year in 2023 and do some sort of self-assessment audit. Now, this is going to be both for how much I spent on video games as well as what sort of video games I ended up purchasing for my collection. Now, there are many reasons why I want to do this type of audit, which I'll get into a little bit later, but the main reason why I wanted to share this with you all was because I really want to um, bring the channel back to the idea of curated collecting. And I've noticed the past year or so, I've been giving into a lot of FOMO and purchasing games that maybe I shouldn't have at the time, um, just because I felt this necessary need to buy them right away. And I think with stepping back and assessing what sort of purchasing habits I had last year, will kind of help me come into 2024 with a better mindset of being very deliberate with my purchases. And I'm also kind of going into a transitionary year where I really can't spend a ton of money on hobbies, um, especially when I'm transitioning to a different job and potentially have a few months where I will be um, taking a break, essentially. So in this video, I will be revealing exactly how much I spent on video games this past year and also breaking down where that money went. Um, so this is to help kind of assess what my spending habits were, what consoles did I favor, and uh, maybe what are some new uh, habits I wanna pick up for this coming year so I don't go quite as crazy. So I'm gonna move over to some spreadsheets now where I've written down every single game I purchased this past year or received because there were a few pre-orders in there from these limited distribution companies that arrived last year, but I may have purchased in the previous year. So as you see here, there are quite a number of titles and I have tallied up the systems there for. So for example, I have in column C, all of the Switch titles, um, in column D, PS5 titles, column E, the PS4 titles, and for column F, I've kind of just put everything else together there. I, I labeled it retro, even though most of these are not retro. Um, you have some 3DS titles in here as well as PS Vita, but for our purposes, I'm just gonna label this as retro war, the catch all of everything else. So I did create this spreadsheet a little post hoc. So there may be some inaccuracies here, but overall, after reviewing some of my previous pickup videos, these should be all the games I received last year. At the bottom here, there are four titles I have italicized. And so these are actually games I don't have in hand yet, but I did purchase last year. Um, and so this is Knights of Azure 2 for the PS4 that I got from Video Games Plus. Um, that should be arriving any time this week, actually. Um, and the other three are from these limited distribution companies with the two Persona titles on the Switch through Limited Run Games, which I think are supposed to be coming out soon because I only ordered the standard editions. And then also Chained Echoes for the Switch, which through first print games or whatever they're called and they're kind of notorious for taking forever to come out um they're probably the worst company when it comes to the timeline and getting games out in a timely manner so that might come out this year but it might not um, i'll keep you guys posted whenever it does eventually arrive so i did buy 97 games this past year which is a lot it's under 100 which i guess it's good I didn't break 100, but 97 is still a ton of games. And more than half of these are Switch games, which I think is telling. Um, but um, this is at 56.7% of my purchases. Um, and then I have um, just over 11% for PS5, over 14% for PS4, and all the other games and consoles over 17 percent so this particular breakdown tells me multiple things first i'm probably buying too many switch games which i kind of knew because i have multiple rows on my shelves back there full of switch titles uh, i really enjoy collecting for the switch and i think from a collecting perspective and ownership perspective that's a good console to collect for i'm going to get into some more breakdowns but i do think a lot of these switch titles were kind of FOMO purchases for me so one of the things I really wanted to assess was how many games I purchased from these limited print companies. So I made a separate column, tallying up all of those. And as we scroll to the bottom here, you can see that I purchased 26 in total this past year. So that made up more than a fourth of my video game purchases were through these type of companies, which I think moving forward, I really want to limit this. I really want to limit this for multiple reasons, uh, mostly because I do think this is my biggest problem when it comes to FOMO because there's always a short pre-order window or in the case of super rare games out in the UK, they have a limited supply where you have to buy it up before it's gone. So I really want to in 2024 stay away from um, these sort of games, um, mostly because 
I don't think I necessarily need them in my collection. I, I think there are a few that I would love to have. Like I was really happy that I purchased Hannah and Mutation M on a whim because I ended up loving that game um, on the Switch. I think a lot of these I probably don't need in my collection because honestly, I'm not sure how I actually feel about most of these. Um, I guess one strategy I could do is um, purchase some of these digitally, test them out to see if I wanna go ahead and invest and purchase them physically. But that does take time and it feels kind of weird double dipping on that, um, especially if the digital is kind of expensive at the time of when that pre-order window is. The other possibility is that some of these games might go on to other systems. For example, we saw this with Leonard Run games where a lot of PS4 titles eventually saw PS5 versions down the line. So I could see this with a lot of Nintendo games having that potential. Definitely, I think for 2024, I'm going to limit how many uh, purchases I make through these companies. The other thing I wanted to assess was how many new releases I purchased last year that came out in 2023. So I did my best not to conflate these numbers with um, that G column for the limited print companies because most of those were games that had previously released but got a new physical. And so I don't wanna, again, kind of contaminate those numbers and just focus on new releases that had retail uh, for 2023. Um, so you can see early on, I did purchase a lot of new games, starting with uh, One Piece Odyssey up here and making our way down. And I do want to note that um, I kind of looked back and only two of these I purchased on um, day of release for the Steelbook. And that was One Piece Odyssey and Octopath Traveler 2. And so that happened in the early part of the year. So I'm glad that didn't really trickle down to the latter part of the year because that's, again, something I don't want to fall trap to. <laughs> Um, because a lot of these steelbooks eventually you could pick up for cheap you don't have to necessarily buy a game at full retail price and honestly i'm not a steelbook collector and so i i really try not to go down that rabbit hole um but yeah there's quite a number of new releases here and some of, a lot of these i did get marked down and a lot of these are also limited editions which i'll be assessing in another column soon um so you kind of have to buy those when they release otherwise they run out but overall, I think I bought too many new releases and many of these I didn't get to, unfortunately. So in total, I purchased 23 new releases from 2023. And that's almost a fourth as well, which is a lot. So I think one of the things I'm gonna strive for in next year is to really limit how many new releases I pick up because of just how extensive my backlog is. I really don't need to purchase them. And I think honestly, most of them are gonna get much cheaper if I wait. There are some you have to be careful when doing the strategy, like some of the NIS America games, especially the niche ones that don't command a reprint from Video Games Plus. Um, you have to be careful with those. But overall, I think I'm gonna strive to wait unless I wanna play a game really close to release date. Another thing I really wanted to assess was how many reprints I purchased, mostly from Video Games Plus last year. I think this is another sort of FOMO purchase that can happen because there are a lot of games as collectors we are familiar with that have reached really expensive values in a short amount of time. And so um, usually when there's an opportunity to buy things at retail value or less, um, you kind of feel like you have to in the moment buy them. But I've learned with Video Games Plus reprints that a lot of times they kind of overstock them and they often discount them additionally down the line, especially during their Black Friday sales and whatnot. So I picked up a few during their sales, um, but a lot of these I did pick up um, before they were further discounted, which I'm kind of kicking myself for because most of these I haven't played. Um, as you see here, I did some early ones um, with Blue Reflection, Attack on Titan 2, Final Battle, uh, and this Fate Extella game. And then I also got The Liar Princess and Blind Prince on the Switch, Italia Riza from the Switch um, to replace my PAL copy so I could get the North American version. And then we have Odin Sphere for the PS4, and Knights of Azure, and then down here, Knights of Azure 2. So in total, nine of the games I purchased last year were these reprints. So compared to these other two columns I looked at, it wasn't quite as bad, but I think I could do better and not hop onto the pre-orders as quickly as I kind of did, especially for some of those early reprints that Video Games Plus did um, in early last year. In the last column I wanted to assess was how many limited editions I purchased last year. I have very limited space in the shelves behind me, so I really can't buy too many more of these large collector's editions. And I noticed last year that I purchased quite a lot. 
And I noticed last year there were quite a number of collector's editions that I ended up getting that were not necessarily from my core franchises. I, I tend to buy collector's editions for like Trails, Xenoblade, Zelda, and Fire Emblem. Uh, so I wanted to kind of track how many I actually ended up getting. So um, if we scroll down to the bottom here after seeing all these tallies. There are 15 in total I ended up receiving, uh, which is quite a lot and takes up a lot of shelf space. Next year, I don't anticipate buying as many, but I guess you never know what's gonna happen. And I feel like there's so many releases that are coming out next year that haven't been announced yet that might come with really nice collector's editions. I might have to kind of give in to and purchase in the moment. But I'm gonna switch over now to another spreadsheet with my sinking funds. So this is sort of my strategy when it comes to the really large purchases for my video game collection. So this is mostly saving for hardware upgrades as well as some anticipated figures and collector's editions that are coming out. So this spreadsheet contains all of my hobby related sinking funds um, and most of them I've already committed to and pre-ordered. Um, so the ones that have a goal value um, on the right are ones that I pre-ordered um, with the exception of Baldur's Gate 3, which I'll talk about soon. But as you can see here, I'm anticipating having over $1,600 for these sinking funds, which is a substantial amount of money to save for throughout the course of the year. And a lot of these are figures and collector's editions that I really don't want to give up. So this is kind of part of the reason why I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious and deliberate with what uh, video games I'm purchasing um, each month because I have to save up for these things. Um, as you can see here, I've already saved up enough money for the Breath of the Wild Link Nendroid as well as the Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 PS5 Collector's Edition. So those are just sitting in my sinking fund account and just ready to be taken out once they're charged. Um, the next sinking fund that I'm saving up for is in February for the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, Deluxe Edition. And so I bought this for, through uh, Best Buy, so it comes with the additional steelbook. <laughs> I promise this is the only Steelbook pre-order that I have anticipated right now, but hopefully that'll be it. Um, and so right now I've saved just around half for that. And I'm hoping for the rest of this month and a little bit into February to complete that. So that's kind of my strategy when it comes to saving for these larger expenses. And as you can see here, there's a lot of Trails figures and there's also some figures that have been announced, but they haven't been open for pre-order yet. So that's why I have um, these things all italicized because I haven't technically purchased them yet. I'm also anticipating we'll get Ease 10 Collector's Edition either towards the tail end of this year or maybe sometime um, next year. Um, so that's kind of why that's there in a reserved spot. And I also really wanna get Boulder's Gate 3, the um, deluxe edition through the publisher's website. Um, this is an import copy, so it's actually $80 and it comes with a lot of great things, but importing that to the US is an additional $20, so I just haven't purchased that yet. So I missed the wave one where it's supposed to be coming out in the first quarter of this year. Um, so I need to save up money to purchase it so I could be in this uh, wave two that's coming out in the second quarter of the year. And then finally, I have um, kind of an estimate of how much the next uh, Nintendo console is gonna be. I don't know if I'll need this money before the end of this year or sometime early next year. So I wanna just start saving for that and being a little bit um, deliberate with those savings goals. So I don't have too many games that are on pre-order right now and I don't anticipate too many more unless we get some surprise announcements from Nintendo during their February Direct or any other time for the rest of the year. Um, so right now I'm just anticipating getting the new Final Fantasy VII Rebirth game, as well as Trails to Daybreak and Cold Steel 3 or 4 uh, PS5 versions. Um, this is the visual novel from Type Moon that I'm really looking forward to that's coming out um, in July. And um, yeah, we just have Ease 10 maybe and um, Polaris Gate 3. So when it comes to additional collector's editions that I will kind of allow myself to purchase this year, um, this is kind of the short list of what I'll allow. Uh, so any sort of Falcom title, any Xeno title, like if we're gonna get like a Xeno Saga uh, remaster or something, or uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X from 
Honestly, I probably shouldn't just put Xeno here. I probably should put Model of Soft because if they have a new project, I definitely want to support that. Um, any new Fire Emblem, um, hopefully that uh, rumored uh, Genesis of the Holy War remake. Um, Hades 2, I don't think it's coming out physically this year, but you never know. If it does, then I'll definitely buy it. And if there's a new Zelda sort of thing, either um, a remake or something new, um, I probably will buy it. And then I also put down Witcher here. CD Projekt Red um, revealed kind of what they've been working on. And so they've been working on a remake for the original Witcher game. So if that comes out this year or something, or if we hear some pre-order for like a collector's edition or something, I definitely want to probably snag that. All right, so now I'm going to share the actual numbers of how much I spent on video games last year. And I'm going to be pulling aggregate numbers on a monthly basis from my budgeting spreadsheets, which I went into great detail in a previous video. So I'll have that linked in the card as well as uh, down below if you're interested. I go into great detail of how I'm able to balance my hobby spending with my living expenses and other financial goals. So definitely check that out if that interests you. Uh, but now I'm going to kind of reveal month by month how much in total I spent on video games outside of those sinking funds I just shared. So I'm gonna start with January and I spent just over $600, which is a lot. I think a lot of these were from New Year's sales as well as pre-orders for highly anticipated games like One Piece Odyssey and Fire Emblem Engage and Witch on the Holy Night. So I ended up spending quite a lot um, that month. And then in February, I spent over a thousand, which is insane. I'm trying to remember exactly how that came to be. I know this is the month where I bought a lot of Holy Grail items, like my Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Collector's Edition, um, as well as A Link to the Past, um, GBA version in box. And I'm wondering if some of that money was also allocated towards my shelving for my video game collection. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but um, that was a lot of money that I spent on video games. In March, I cooled down a little bit. I spent $493. Still a lot, in my opinion, but not as bad as the previous two months. Um, April, again, going downward trend, thankfully. That was $385. Uh, May was only $27, which is good. My guess is a lot of this went into either other hobbies or I put a lot of money towards sinking funds. Um, it's my guess. Um, and then in June, it went up to $135. July, $467, so a lot again. Um, and then August, it settled down to $65. So you can see a lot of variability here month to month with how much I spent on video games outside of my sinking funds. Um, September was just under $240. October was $408. November was $131. And then lastly, in December, it was 132. So the grand total for how much I spent outside of sinking funds last year was $4,215, which if we average this across the months, was about $351 per month. And because we do have an outlier there in February, as well as in May, I, I did the median as well. So that brings it down to $312 per month. So a substantial amount of money spent towards the hobby for sure. And so this is something I definitely want to kind of curb um, this coming year. And I probably should have emphasized this in the beginning, but really hobby spending is not a necessity. It's definitely not something you should be spending if you have high interest debt or you can't meet your um, living expenses or other financial goals. Um, so it's definitely a luxury um, to be able to spend this much money on video games, which I definitely recognize. And so while I was able to afford this last year, um, it's definitely something I don't think I could replicate this year, um, given my, again, my change in job and potential loss of a stable income for a few months. I have a very hefty emergency fund in anticipation of a loss of income for a few months. So I'm not too worried. I just don't think it's appropriate for me to be spending money on hobbies um, and taking money from that fund, which is really meant for living expenses and the necessary basics. So again, this total does not reflect the sinking funds that I had alongside just other video game spending. So I'll share what the grand total for that is. And um, for the sinking fund, I'm only including um, video game hardware and software. 
Uh, so I spent just under $2,000 on video games, hardware and software um, last year. So that's a lot of money as well. Though, to be fair, a lot of this was money that I had saved up for a few years because I was anticipating buying a PS5 as well as a Switch OLED um, and some other things. So technically this is money that I had saved in the previous years that I only just spent last year. So if we add these two together, um, the grand total is just over $6,000 on video games last year. So this is no question a lot of money for a hobby and it kind of boggles my mind that I spent that much on video games last year, but I do want to be transparent. That's why I'm sharing these numbers. I do recognize that some of this information might be used against me in some means. I've already had very strange encounters with individuals who like to make wild assumptions and just write nasty comments all the time. But honestly, I do think this information should be more transparent in this sort of hobby space because not enough people really talk about what I think is very important um, is financial literacy and balancing how much we spend on the hobbies we enjoy with more important things like living expenses and other savings goals. So I hope my transparency will help someone out there and also encourage those who are looking to spend less on hobbies such as video games. Um, kind of give some tangible um, ideas of how to curb these spending habits. As someone who loves spreadsheets, I do find them to be a very useful tool in kind of pinpointing what areas you may want to address um, when assessing a problem. So I hope some of these strategies I went over today will help someone um, or um, you could also alter this to fit your needs um, if need be. And on the channel, I'm really hoping to bring up these ideas again. Um, both for holding myself accountable and to really strive towards building a curated collection. So I do have a lot of the videos planned that have been delayed. Um, I had a few different eye issues, which is why I'm sporting my glasses today. But this year, I'm really hoping to focus more on my backlog. I'll definitely be sharing some pickup videos, maybe not monthly, but maybe every other month to kind of uh, share what I picked up and also, again, to hold myself accountable for the goals I laid out um, today. So let me know if you've made any New Year's resolutions this year, especially if they're video game focused, either to kind of scale back on your collection or to focus more on your backlog. Um, I love to hear it. And until my next video, bye guys.